I want to thank my collaborators um, uh, before proceeding. So in this, um, I, I tweak the title a little bit. Uh, so we are um, aiming to image uh, different stars and uh, trying to understand if we get any clues uh, for mass loss mechanisms. Um, let me see. Okay, yeah. Um, so why we care about mass loss, and uh, I think you are the best audience. You understand it. So we we um, we we want to understand how the red supergiants end up uh, LBVs or Wolfright stars, or how whether they end up as a black hole or neutron stars. They are uh, all they depend on the um, mass loss uh, rates. So I think that that. So we want we want to understand the mass loss mechanisms um, uh, for that reason. Uh, uh, I bet everyone saw these images, and uh, the the interesting part is uh, this: uh, these are the sphere images, and uh, uh, during the dimming, the star is uh, dimmed in the southern part. Uh, and this was explained: the great dimming was explained. Uh, uh, with uh, a convection cell and uh, a combined activity with pulsation and also potentially with magnetic field. So uh, in when a, a rare or hot uh, uh, convection cells, you know, they form and they, uh, they uh, transition into um, uh, uh, surface mass ejection and that surface, the gas clouds travel uh, far away from the star and they, they cool down and they uh, they make uh, dust particles and they they um, block the star in a line of sight and we, that makes the uh, dimming of the star. And uh, we, uh, we ask the question here, if this uh, uh, convection cell, cell triggered mass loss mechanism is common for other stars. Unfortunately, um, we cannot test uh, for several stars uh, because uh, these uh, dimming events uh, do not happen uh, regularly. Or, uh, and with uh, some of the uh, stars, we do not have a uh, um, telescope angular resolution to, images them, to image them. Um, so, uh, I was looking for uh, stars with which ones are very suitable to study uh, uh, dimming events. So I, I found that um, uh, red super red hypergiants or yellow hypergiants are more uh, more suitable for this one because they are very um, extreme. Uh, they experience extreme outburst events and uh, mass loss. Uh, here uh, I choose for this study. Rocas and RW Sep. Rocas is a uh, yellow hypergiant. It is very uh, hot, uh, with seven thousand Kelvin compared to uh, RW Sep, which is like a uh, mean. Uh, when when it was uh, uh, dimming, it was uh, three thousand nine hundred Kelvin. Otherwise, it was four thousand four hundred Kelvin. Betelgeuse is uh, roughly like a three thousand seven hundred Kelvin. Um, so Rocas is a yellow, yellow hypergiant, which uh, um uh the both stars are um uh, they are transitioning from the red uh, supergiant phase to uh, blue words uh, this is the yellow wide uh, so called uh, unstable region where uh, the star experiences uh, uh episodic mass loss events so these are the two stars i studied the one more uh, unique uh, characteristics of yellow hypergiants is they change their temperature a lot because they are uh, they are uh, shifting or they are uh, transitioning towards the boulevards and they they change spectral uh, variability f to g2 and so on so uh, these are the light curve we, we, uh, of the rwsf uh, characterizing the outburst of uh, rwsf over 100 um, like last century uh, it experienced six major outbursts, uh, and uh, the re most recent one was uh, end of 2022 or early 2023. Uh, 
we call this one gray dimming because it's uh, is is the the lowest point or the the greatest uh, dimming it ha occurred over the century the past century um and one interesting uh, observation is um on the uh, dimming part is so i i i centered all the six uh, uh, dimming events uh, on the uh, when the uh, the peak dimming was happened and if you see the fall time and the rise time it is uh, around four years. Uh, there is uh, some exception one, and there is another one. So, uh, uh, so what causes them? Uh, why there are differences? Maybe this is due to the uh, the the dust blocking projection of the stellar surface. Um, but yeah, so uh, let's discuss about this one later. Let's go to Rokas. Uh, this one also experienced four major events in the past. And uh, the more uh, uh, the the big one was in 1946, and the the most studied one was 2000. It was studied uh, extensively with the spectroscopy photometry, and they found that uh, it ex normally it should do the 10 to the power of minus five uh, mass loss, but during the uh, dimming period, uh, the the order is two orders of magnitude more. Uh, the, the the mass loss is 10 to the power of minus three solar masses per year so it's very extreme and here I compare the uh, beetle juice the red one rocas uh, green one and uh, yellow uh, rwcf the the um, fall time and the rise time and if you see the uh, beetle juice one it only experiences the falling and rising within a year rocas is uh, two years and the rwcf is around three years I thought in the beginning maybe they are related uh, scale with the physical size of a star. We measured the physical sizes of Rokas and RWCF with the uh, uh, interferometer and found that uh, Rokas is smaller than Betelgeuse, uh, but still it has a larger um, falling time and rising time. Uh, maybe this is due to um, asymmetric shape of the dust blocking and uh, dust characteristics. Characteristics we need to understand them. So here is the, the main part imaging. We uh, were fortunate to observe RWCF on the right uh, right in while it is uh, going through the dimming. So it experienced dimming <clears throat> from 2020 to uh, begin, beginning of 2023, actually December 2022. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we imaged with the uh, Char Array located in USA, California. Um, so, in in when it was dimming, uh, we got this image. Uh, the, if you see, the western part is not bright as the east part. Uh, when we take the same uh, star image uh, eight months later, when it is rebrightening, and we see this image. So the the west part is uh, uh, back to normal. This is an H band. If we see in the K band. It, same again, um, the west part is uh, dimmer in uh, when it is uh, uh, yeah when it is faintest stage and when um, it is re started rebrightening it the western part is reappeared again, um, and we uh, we followed the star during the dimming uh, so rebrightening phase. So these are the four epochs, and we see that star is uh, changing. Um, over uh, when the star is uh, uh, brightening, and uh, uh, we checked for um, all the um, artifacts the instrument can um, create or image reconstruction can cause, and we uh, we these seem these images seem to be very real, and we interpret these images. Uh, these are image, H band images, K band images. We um, interpret uh, these uh, image changes as the dust is. Uh, uh, changing uh, when the star is brightening, so that's why the the image uh, are images are changing. Uh, but but uh, someone can also argue that uh, uh, intrinsically the um, the uh, the star sparse could be changing. Um, so we cannot um, rule out this theory. But fortunately, there is a, a spectroscopic data available uh, from uh, Europe Observatory. 
Estonia, I think. Uh, um, so Ani Kasikov, sorry if I pronounce it wrongly, but uh, so what, what they found is um, H alpha line is uh, uh, observed in uh, during the great dimming uh, was uh, blue shifted and the intensity uh, the emission is so high, uh, indicating that some something uh, some matter is moving towards us. And we interpret that one as uh, the, some dust is blocking the star um, and causing the dimming. And the similar observation was also uh, uh, this observation compared to similarly to Rokas in 2001, where uh, it experienced uh, similar um, uh, H alpha profiles. Uh, so we, we interpret this one as uh, 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 dust blocking similar to Betelgeuse. Although we did, did not uh, um, prove that uh, the convection cells are causing the uh, surface mass ejections, but at least we say that dust is blocking the star. And uh, let me go to the second star. Uh, these are, we observed this one in 2023 and 2024 in H and K band wavelengths. So this is the image uh, we got in uh, 2023. Uh, we see that uh, uh, four uh, giant convection cells. And it is very interesting. Uh, the star is so hot and we still see uh, the very big uh, giant convection cells. I thought uh, the convection cells uh, are larger when the star is colder, like red supergiant. But uh, this is interesting. We see um, uh, not only the star, the sparks are bigger, but also there are many, four. Um, uh, then we observed uh, this one again uh, last month, so eight months later, and we see the star. So this is in H-band, 2013 October. This is 2024 June, and uh, we see that uh, the star, the the bright sparks are dark sparks are uh, changed. Um, so uh, let me show you another image reconstruction. This this. Uh, another image reconstruction software called Rotir, which uh, models or uh, makes the images uh, in a sphere. And uh, in H and K bands in 2023, if you see th there are four sparks, H and K are matching and the dark, dark sparks are matching. But when we go to 2024, uh, to, uh, the, the bright sparks are not in the same place, they are displaced. Um, so why they are, um, uh, we we do not have a, um, a measure life cycle of these convection cells, uh, in the, at least in the yellow hypergiants. Um, uh, one uh, hypothesis is the turnover time of giant convection cells uh, matches with uh, long secondary periods, but this is not observationally proved maybe by following this same star for uh, 500 days, this is a long second period, uh, probably we can um, tell about this hypothesis if it is valid or not valid. There is a, one observation we can make is, uh, Rokas is the second um, high, yellow hypergiant which has uh, imaged so far, uh, second one so far. First one is HR5171. Um, they found out to be, this was imaged with VLTI Pioneer, and they found that this star is a, a binary, and they also uh, imaged the surface, uh, stellar surface, and they found that uh, the first epoch in 2014, they found uh, two uh, convection cells, uh, but uh, when they, when the same star is uh, observed in 2016 and 2017, uh, they did not find the two, but they, it is one, so uh, so it is, of course, it is changing, but we do not have um, long, long term following of the star and uh, um, uh, giving the information how the convection cells change. Um, so my uh, 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 big uh, um, uh, uh, interpretation is maybe these convection cells might have uh, caused the uh, uh, mass loss observed in the previous uh, years, but we don't know. So we we are planning to observe this star for the next few years and see how, how uh, it is related to the mass loss events. 
so I will summarize. Uh, our Chara images show that uh, at least they explain gray dimming uh, uh, that uh, the uh, is some dust is blocking the star. That's why the gray dimming, gray dimming has happened. And the row CAS images show uh, four giant convection cells. And uh, um, this is the, we have to check whether that is uh, predicted, predicted by theory or not. Um, and uh, um, one observation is Betelgeuse after the dimming, uh, it uh, did not follow the pulsation. The pulsation period was uh, uh, changed. So 400 days to 200 days, but it, this was not observed in RWCF and Rokia. So, so this is the difference. And also uh, the fall and rise times uh, do not follow with the, the size of the star. Uh, so we need to model uh um dust characteristics are uh, other theories to explain that one uh so we are writing the paper one paper is in review and other is in preparation thank you